Be so unable to be with the team tonight. I know she's on the minds of a lot of her teammates, but a key player for the Tigers both last season and this year. Three goals, two assists. Renee Lyles actually leading the Tigers in scoring. So someone else will have to carry the load. Notre Dame trying to keep that perfect record intact as they get started in conference play. Remember, they got off to a great start in ACC play last season, winning their first six conference games. Notre Dame is in Navy. Clemson in white on their home field. Feels good to be home for Clemson, by the way, a team that was busy on the road. Tough non-conference schedule for the Tigers. Away from home for many of their games. Sammy Meredith putting a little pressure on. Mackenzie Wood in goal for Notre Dame, the transfer from Northwestern, four-year starter there. Get a look a little bit at this three back now for the Irish. Gatino, Hudson to her right, Clinky on her left. Notre Dame transitioning into the attack. Early ball in the box, it was Wingate who got a touch to it. You expect a little chaos here early, Lori, <laughs> after talking to both coaches and the way they wanted to come out in this one? Yeah, certainly. And we're going to see both of these teams press, play on the front foot early on in this game. That's what they do best. That's what they're known for. And already we've seen Notre Dame looking to see if they can get numbers around. This is Maddie Mercado. Is the ball out of bounds? Clemson sure says it is. And our referee, Nicholas Balser, agrees. Goal kick. I think these first 20 minutes, though, are going to be key for both of these teams just to get settled in. First ACC game. Here's another good look of Mercado just trying to see if she can build, look to see if she can just feather that ball in behind. Well done defensively just to see it out from Clemson. Hallie Makowitz, three shutouts on the season for the Tigers. Had a big penalty kick save to help preserve a win on the road for Clemson at West Virginia in their last game. I mentioned Mackenzie Wood. The Irish have used a couple of different goalkeepers, Wood and then Ashley Naylor, the junior, who took over the starting job last season for the Irish when their regular starter, Maddie and Tyrion, went down with an injury. And Naylor has started the last couple of games for Notre Dame, but Wood getting the nod tonight in this conference opener. Born camp does have that green light to look forward. Try to get it to the front line. This is Sammy Meredith. Good to see her back after she missed all of last season due to injury. Former South Carolina Gamecock transferred over to Clemson a couple of years ago. Lane St. George, sophomore out of Seattle, Washington. No starts last year but now has been the regular starting left back for the Tigers as they had to replace Renee Guion in that left back spot and her great left foot. As Eddie Redwanski and I talked about, I'm gonna have to come up with a new nickname. Guion <laughs> Camp was one of my favorites last year with Guion and Bourne Camp connecting on so many goals for the Tigers. Gatino, you don't miss it when she gets forward. Full head of steam, she lays it off. Out and then in. But Albert can't get there. Still some pressure coming from the Irish. So you'll see both of these teams really try to pressure the defense, win it back in a good area. And Hirschfeld, who we just saw on the ball, her position is going to be key, not only defensively just to sit in front of the back line, help anchor the midfield, but also just to win the second balls, help keep possession. Because as we mentioned, this is a Notre Dame team that's going to want to press, that want to get and get numbers forward. And at times, they get so many numbers forward that the transitional moments are going to be on. Hirschfeld's going to be key to, to start those quick attacks for Clemson. Yeah, Hirschfeld, keep an eye on her. Number 15 in white in the middle of the field. Senior from Atlanta. All ACC the last two seasons. A second team selection last year, and she started every match. And Coach Redwanski talking about how much she has really grown and matured, even just this season. 
in that leadership role. Here's Meredith. It may be a three back, but Notre Dame knows how to get back numbers when needed. Look at all those Navy jerseys in the box that Clemson's going to have to try to play through. Well, that's where Hirschfeld, Jen, will be an important piece because if it's not on to go quickly, then can they recycle the ball around, look for the wide channels? Because Notre Dame, when they drop players deep, they'll have five on the back line at times. Clemson 4-1-2 and two on the season so far as now they have an opportunity. Notre Dame taken away. That was Kiki Van Zanten played for the Jamaican senior national team as they qualified for the World Cup this summer. The break not on for the Tigers. For the Irish, excuse me, now the Tigers with the ball. Malia and McKenna Morris on that far side. The sisters teaming up. Malia in the more attacking position. But McKenna will certainly get up there as well. McKenna number two, Malia number 21. The band bring a little extra atmosphere here to Riggs Field tonight. We like it. Big weekend for Clemson Athletics here at home. Defending national champs, top ranked men's team will be playing at home tomorrow night on this field. And then Clemson football at home has a night game on Saturday, both of those matchups will be on ACCN this weekend. This Clemson team picked fifth in the preseason by the coaches, and Notre Dame picked sixth, so pretty close. We'll see where they finish up. As I mentioned, they did meet up in the first round of the ACC tournament last year. Clemson getting the win, 3-2. seen early on, Jen. Clemson doing a good job of pressing high, forcing numbers, and almost pinning Notre Dame back in defensively, and they're only able to attack with two players. Easy outlet for Clemson to be able to win the second ball and then play out of it. But it's going to require some patience from Clemson in the attack. Here goes Wingate trying to break free, well covered by the Clemson defense. Born Camp was there to meet her before she could turn. Mercado, defender down in the box, but the ball will go out of bounds. Goal kick. Five goals, one assist on the season for Maddie Mercado, senior out of San Diego for the Irish. I've seen her on the ball a couple of times already in these first few minutes. Morris to Meredith. St. George touch got away a little bit. It'll stay with the Tigers for the throw. So number 18, Maria Manusos in there as well. Freshman making her third start of the season for the Tigers in that front line. No by Caroline Conti, senior out of Greenville, South Carolina. Got a shot at least into the box, but nothing too much to trouble Mackenzie Wood. Yeah, and I'll be curious as this first 45 wears on, Jen, just to watch Sammy Meredith up top. Number 29 is doing a good job of, we're seeing her press right now, but also just being an outlet back to goal, help keep possession. But there's no threat in behind against the three center backs of Notre Dame. So once she comes back, can they get players like Manusos and Moros, or Morris, excuse me, in behind to threaten the, the back line of Notre Dame vertically? Now a little bit different. You see that speed central more so for Notre Dame, especially with Wingate as that threat behind. And it's a little different for the Tigers, where they get that more from their wide players, at least with this current group that's out there. Notre Dame will get the shot off. Good effort, but Makowitz makes a save.
Meredith had two players right around her. Corbin Albert, part of the group that took it away. Mercado on it again. The Irish will try to reset. That is actually Leah Klinky, number four, one of those three center backs who is up in this attack for the Irish. <laughs> sure, that's a great thing, but a lot of contact and Wingate committing the foul. Yeah, it'll be Morris that's taken down. McKenna Morris, number two for Clemson. But as you just mentioned, it's Klinky that's making the drive out of the back for Notre Dame. There's the foul on Morris that earns the free kick. Well done from Wingate to track back. But it's something to keep an eye on because Nate Norman, Notre Dame head coach, did talk to us about only playing with three center backs. Sometimes those center backs will go on adventurous runs. <laughs> that was the word he used, yeah. adventurous. But maybe he doesn't want those adventures, really, it's, from his three backs. Yeah, I think it's just going to be interesting in terms of not leaving themselves exposed with just two center backs at times against this Clemson attack. And Nate Norman is fifth year as a head coach of the Irish. Team made it to the third round of the NCAA tournament last year. We've got our first corner kick of the match, and this is an area where Notre Dame has certainly created a lot of opportunities. Number one in the country, almost 10 per game on average so far. And they got their first goal off a corner kick in their last match. That one's not going to give any opportunity. Wasted chance out of bounds. Yeah, and they're going to know that they need to do better from that service from Albert, especially when you look at Klinky sitting at 5'10", Gatino 5'11". Those two players, great targets on set pieces, have to make better opportunities, or better create better chances off of those opportunities. I mean, one of the great highlights of the year last year, I think, had to be that Ava Catino diving header in double overtime regular season against Clemson. Game winner. That came off a corner kick. Kiki Van Zanten, ACC Offensive Player of the Week, number seven for Notre Dame. Martinez, number 16, is on that far side for the Irish. It is Kati Drazina on the other side. Van Zanten trying to split a couple of the Tiger defenders. Does well to at least keep it for the moment. Now Clebson on it. Have a chance to go. Nobody really stepping up to stop St. George. And does it stay in? It does. Manusos does well. Freshman out of Weddington, North Carolina. Hirschfeld. Back to Harper White. Right up to Meredith, it goes. Manusos left open in the wing. Left-footed player naturally does use the left. And if Clemson Jen isn't going to have a, a thread in behind the back line of Notre Dame, then they have to play it out wide, but they have to commit runners into the box. You see Manuso is doing a good job of keeping her positioning out wide, looking to see if the serve balls in, but it's just an easy grab in the end from the goalkeeper of Notre Dame Wood. Wingate, if she stayed onside, could be trouble here. The touch, though, got too far out in front of her, but that gives you a glimpse of the weapon that Olivia Wingate is. And such good movement from the striker for Notre Dame. This time it's inside out, just keeps herself on side, and then ball's played in behind. And there's just a heavy touch, as you mentioned, that makes it easy to defend it by Clemson. But good look early on from Notre Dame. Morris slicing through the other way. It has nobody with her offensively, though. Sammy Meredith was a little bit trailing the play. Good ball right through the middle, but Tigers can't hang on. Manusos wins it back. 
saw McKenna Morris coming up on the far side. Conti now. Morris in the corner. Couple of cuts, still looking for that cross. Eddie Redwanski showing off his skills. Still got it in the pregame, his 12th season as the Tigers head coach, ACC Coach of the Year in 2016 when Clemson won the ACC regular season title, their first since 2000. St. George, diagonal ball, goes through everyone and out of bounds. And I actually think St. George was trying to go herself with a shot, just didn't get a clean look on it, almost fell to the feet of Malia Morris on the far post. But good energy, good back and forth start to this game for both sides. Exactly what we expect, first ACC game, both coaches anticipating high level. Felt like it was a great game to open up ACC play with. And some similarities too, I think both coaches talked about that and the way that these teams want to attack, that they want to press at times. St. George. So far, it's been tough for Clemson to really find that next pass to unlock this defense. And you're right, Jen, you said it, just a, a slight touch or a heavy touch that's allowing for Notre Dame to be able to get it back into position, reclaim possession. Wingate slipped a little, not sure she would have gotten there anyway. Bourne Camp wins it, wants to put it behind the back line of the Irish, but no one to run onto it for the Tigers. In case you missed it earlier, we did mention that Clemson, without their leading scorer at the moment, Renee Lyles, such a creative player in the midfield who would be helping in the attack, but she's away with a family emergency. So number five, Emily Bruff, freshman out of Liverpool, England, making her first start. And already a good start for Bruff, though. First start of the season, finding some good spots, Jen. Good balls played in centrally to her. And really the difference for both of these teams, though, is going to be in the attack. We're already seeing early on in this match, see the foul on Bourne Camp against Notre Dame. But both teams doing a good job of getting numbers back quickly behind the ball, making the game predictable for themselves on the defensive side. Now can they both be a bit more composed in the attack, complete the final pass, or look for an extra pass just to unbalance the back line of the opposition. Albert, good ball for Wingate. One touch, back central. Van Zanten, Wingate was still recovering to get back onside and in position. There's Bruff. She'll continue her run. Freshman scored in her first two appearances for the Tigers this season. Anaya Hudson, the senior defending for the Irish. Hirschfeld wants to go the other way. Kenna Morris right into the heart of the defense, but it bounces back to the Tigers. Manusos charging forward for Clemson, edge of the area, goes to the other side, bounces for Malia Morris, plenty of time, goes to her sister, and then Van Zanten took one for the team there, blocking that shot from close range. 
Well, it's the best bit of attacking play from Clemson that we've seen, and it all starts from Manusos just on this near side, just to allow the ball to run across her body that opens up the space to be able to find Malia Morris on that far side. And it's that switch of play, Jen, the quick movement to find the, the opposite side is going to be on all evening for Clemson, especially with how narrow the three center backs play for Notre Dame. Here is Conti, has Meredith in the middle. That's where she goes. Meredith, the third goal, Clemson goal! And it gets the three back that Notre Dame employs. If you can go quickly, that's when you have to go because they're so narrow defensively that the space is out wide. Good recognition from Clemson to go quick. And it's a great ball across to Meredith that keeps herself on side and goes first time to put it past Wood. And there's the ball in, Meredith from that far post. Feather just to the far post. Really good looking ball from Conti who made her way, kept herself on side, then Meredith and the first time comes across it with her right foot, foot could have gone with her left, but opposite to just close her, close her hips and plays it right back where it came from to put her team up 1-0. And you know that one feels good for Sammy Meredith, her first goal of the season, missed all of last season with injury, had three goals, three assists the previous year, her first with the Tigers after transferring from South Carolina. And really such an important goal because at this point in time, 25 minutes in, we've seen Notre Dame do such a good job at times of just dropping back to a back five, making it difficult for Clemson to find space in the wide channels or even in behind. Notre Dame perhaps looking for a quick answer here. It's clinky once again. Number four was up there for Notre Dame, one of those three backs. Mercado, a tight space. A little fancy for Malia Morris. It winds up, at least at the moment it did, with Notre Dame. Ava Gattino. Tune in on Sunday for our Sunday Best on ACCN. Three strong early season matchups in a number of sports. First, it's Miami against number 20, Oregon, and women's volleyball. That's noon Eastern. Then we'll have the field hockey matchup between number 13, St. Joe's, number 9, Virginia, and women's soccer capping off Wake Forest and NC State. All three right here on ACCN and the ESPN app on Sunday. Conference play really getting rolling in ACC women's soccer this weekend. This is the first conference matchup for any of the teams that we've got for you here tonight. Clemson with the lead on their home field. Meredith in the 21st minute. Manusos. We'll earn a corner first of the match for the Tigers. And that's the pace that Clemson has to attack when they are in defending and then looking to transition quickly. Go as fast as you can to catch Notre Dame's defense out. Don't let them get settled. McKenna Morris. Junior out of Germantown, Maryland. Third team all ACC a year ago. Had nine assists. Go along with her six goals. Keep your eye on Bourne Camp. She won't get the first one, but she's still up. Does get onto the ball. No goals yet for Bourne Camp. Ten goals, ten assists last season and an All-American season for Bourne Camp, also named first team All-ACC for the Tigers. Yeah. 
This is Born Camp. She stayed up there after the corner kick. But in the end, no opportunity. There's some of her numbers. I mean, what an incredible season. So good on both ends of the field for the Tigers. No goals yet this season, does have a couple of assists. She is so dangerous on set pieces, whether she is delivering them or getting on the end of them. Yeah, and I think what's interesting, Jen, too, is that you can look at those stats and then think, okay, she only has two assists on this season and she's not being as productive, but such an important piece to the defense. We talked about her being able to dictate tempo, helping in the buildup that allows for Clemson to be able to keep possession out of the back and always is a threat. So even if she's not getting on the end of it, scoring the goals, then she's occupying so much of the attention from the opposition that leaves other players free and available to get on the other, the end of set pieces themselves. Tigers coming off back-to-back -back shutout wins. One against Appalachian State here at home and then on the road at 17th ranked West Virginia. Notre Dame committing the foul. Free kick coming for the Tigers. That's a good initial touch from White just to alleviate some of the pressure and then force the foul from Notre Dame. Had a few decent looks, opportunities in the attack, Notre Dame, but it's really been all Clemson in terms of possession in the middle of the field and then allows them to build into the attack. First ACC Women's Soccer Conference match of this 2022 season coming your way from historic Riggs Field in Clemson, South Carolina. Between the Clemson Tigers, ranked number 24, and sixth ranked Notre Dame, the Irish unbeaten, untied so far, one of four teams in the country that can make that claim. Jen Hildreth, former ACC Player of the Year. Lori Lindsay, glad to have you with us. There's a lot of contact there. Both players go down, no whistle from our referee. Wingate could make something of this. She cuts it in. Olivia Wingate, leading scorer for the Irish, right at the keeper. And a great example of just how quickly Wingate can pounce on a loose ball and make something in the attack. This is an errant pass from Bourne Camp that allows for Wingate to get on the end of it, and then just creates a 1v1 situation. Well done for Morris to track back to at least force Wingate to have to take a, a touch inside. Makes it easier for Makowitz in the end. Wingate, though, especially last season and into this season, has been pretty good, at least at forcing the goalkeeper to make a save. Had the best shot accuracy in the ACC last season. Seven goals, five assists. She already has six goals this season to lead the Irish. Tiger somehow managed to keep this ball in play. Van Zanten. County Drazina. Lost it. Jersey tug, get ready for the card. Here it comes. Drazina will pick up the yellow. And Manusos has done such a good job on this near side of really taking out Martinez, not allowing her to influence the attack. This time, just picking her pocket and then it's Martinez that's drawing the foul. Or excuse me, Drazina. First changes of the match coming for both teams. It's a trio for Notre Dame. Coming on, Ellie Osbeck, number five, Aaron Honstein, number 10, two of the three, and Katie Coyle, the other. 
Tigers also making a change. Corbin Albert coming is already in the match. That's a correction. It's Sydney Menerick, number 12, who comes into the match for Clemson. And she replaces Manusos, who's been pretty good freshman, but Menerick also had three goals on the season for the Tigers. So keep an eye on number 12 as Clemson gets in the attack. So Drazina, Matriano, and Martinez, those two wide wingback players for Notre Dame, two of the three that went off along with her holding midfielder, Matriano, that's where Honstein came in. Meredith, goal scorer for the Tigers in the 21st minute. Maneric, looks like she and Morris flip sides when Maneric came in. Yeah, really good recognition there from Maneric as well, just to, to keep possession. Saw that Notre Dame had done a good job of dropping players back. Numerically didn't have the numbers in the box for Clemson and opted to keep possession. Those are the moments that are going to be key because then they can recycle and look to build and create those little 1v1 situations. So keep your eye these next 15 minutes now here of the first half before we get to halftime. Do these substitutions maybe change some things tempo wise or the way that the teams attack, particularly Notre Dame with the changes they made and a couple of different players coming in. We really haven't seen it from Nate Norman's side yet. One of the reasons why they do make so much of the, the changes in the 30th minute mark is with their depth, their ability to continue to press teams. And a lot of credit to Clemson here at home, pinning them back, not allowing them to get more players in advanced positions and really create a lot of clear opportunities in the attack. Just two shots for the Irish thus far, both on goal. Remember, this is a team that came into this match. Some of the best numbers in the country, top three in both shots and shots on goal per game. And that is Emily Bruff, the freshman out of Liverpool, England, making her first start tonight. The wrong end of that play. Yeah, she's picked up some good positioning in the attack, and both of the players just colliding heads. Hunstein and Bruff, as this ball gets loose, pops up. seem to be okay initially, but certainly you want to make sure you check that out. And she must have been feeling something to have stopped after the play. Now I'll have the trainer come out and take a look. Just make sure there is no concussion, no danger of that in the moment. They'll test for that for sure. And then allow both teams to come to the side and talk things over. We don't have hydration breaks tonight because it's a beautiful, cool evening. <laughs> Starting to feel like fall here in Clemson, South Carolina, but this essentially provides that opportunity for both teams. I think if you're if you're Clemson right now and Eddie Rodwanski, you, you're extremely happy with how this game is going. You're dictating the tempo. You're winning the second balls, getting on the end of loose balls. That's allowing you to be able to keep possession and then create into the attack. The first 20 minutes of this game was critical in terms of utilizing the home field advantage, settling into this first ACC game, and they've done just that and really limited Notre Dame in the attack. Well, Clemson will make a couple of changes here. Bruff is one of those. Ella Hooser, number 16, sophomore of Cornelius, North Carolina, will come on in her place. And then Emma Winner is the other player getting ready. She's still on the sideline, has not come in yet. They get a look at Hooser, her mom, Sherry, was an All-American soccer player at Clemson, still number one all-time in assists, so no pressure for her daughter, right? Try to live up to a record <laughs> holder.
Gatino. Gatino wants to get it right to that front line. Like that touch from Albert. Notre Dame wanting a foul on the play. They won't get that, but they will get a corner. And Gatino so good at playmaking out of the back. Just find a little bit of space. She's the one that plays this ball in, and then it's flicked on to Osbeck. Doing well to get on the end of it and earning the corner kick for Notre Dame. We mentioned it earlier, but bears repeating Notre Dame number one in the country in corner kicks per game, almost 10. This is their second right into the box. It's won initially by Clemson and then up and out with the follow up. You know, just thinking of that last play, Jen, there's opportunities once Clemson does get set defensively, they can gain more ground defensively once it's played back for Notre Dame to the three center backs step up and deny Gatino her ability to play make out of the back that created that opportunity. Sophia Fisher, sophomore of Scottsdale, Arizona. No relation, by the way, to Sammy Fisher, the three-time All-ACC player who had such a great career with the Irish, graduated last year, drafted by Chicago in the NWSL. And then Emma Wenner, that substitute I mentioned earlier, she came on for Meredith up top, the goal scorer. So it's number 13 for Clemson. Katie Coyle, good speed on the wing for the Irish. Still working their way forward. But Mercado. And it's a Clemson throw. Well done by the Tiger defense. And Hirschfeld's done a good job not only getting on the end of the loose balls, but also covering defensively this time. This comes out to the wide channel. Put herself in some really good positions defensively as well. Can really see Wenner buzzing around up there, number 13, just wherever the ball is, she's trying to win it back for the Tigers. Fresh legs coming off the bench for the freshman out of Vermont. Catino, such a rock there in the middle defensively for the Irish. To credit our referee, Nicholas Balser, getting out of a tight spot himself, trying to get out of the way of the play just then. Yes. Under 10 minutes to play in our first half from Clemson, South Carolina. ACC opener for both of these teams. Number six, Notre Dame. Number 24, Clemson. ACC PM is ACC Network's new afternoon studio show. Mark Packer hosts, along with former Tar Heel football standout Trey Boston, former Seminole Taylor Tannebaum. They'll have the latest from around the conference to get you ready for all of the upcoming games. That's ACC PM weekdays, 4 Eastern, right here in ACCN and the ESPN app. One goal allowed so far in this match. Tigers getting it in the 21st minute through Sammy Meredith, her first of the season. She's since been subbed off. Wingate always working so hard. The spear of the attack for the Irish. 
Lost it, though. Good defending. The delivery after the fact, though, not as good. Gave it back to Notre Dame. Senior Harper White, that center back partner with Megan Bornkamp, middle of the defense for the Tigers. <laughs> Kenna Morris lost it. That's another jersey tug, so that'll be a yellow card against Morris. Professional foul, if you will, one for each team. Yeah, it's a clear yellow card for McKenna Morris, who's been really good so far in this game, whether it's just starting the attack, 1v1 defending, just got caught on the ball. Free kick for the Irish. Can they do anything with it? It's a good flick. And we're really seeing in this first half, Jen, and why this game is so important for both, because defensively, both teams have been fairly good in terms of getting numbers back behind the ball from attack to defend transition. Really have committed numbers behind, but then it's in the attack that's let them down, whether it's just an errant touch. Turn the shot for Mercado, what a save! Oh, that happened quickly. Off the throw in. Best opportunity of the match for the Irish. Well, just as I was saying, that being a bit, bit better in the attack, <laughs> how quickly Notre Dame gets on the turn. A really important save to keep this one 1-0 one from Makowitz. Almost looked like she was screened off of the throw in. Good turn, good recognition. Just allow the ball to go across the body and then turn with it. Mercado, and that's a well-struck ball. Just keeps it low. The ensuing corner punched by Makowitz. Is there a follow-up? Ball cleared before that could happen. Corbin Albert is down. Sophomore was an all-freshman team selection. Third team all-ACC last year for the Irish. 12 goals, four assists. Which is a tough challenge defensively. Looks like that catches Albert. Got to credit, though, Clemson have limited Albert with a lot of touches in this game. It's been such an important piece. We talked about Wingate in the attack for Notre Dame. Stretches the back line, opens up that space for Albert. And Clemson doing a good job, especially with Hirschfeld with her positioning, denying a lot of opportunities for Albert to get on the ball and drive at the back line. Good little spell of attack here for the Irish. A couple of set pieces of helped them in their efforts, the free kick, and then really taking advantage of a throw. And if I remember correctly, I think they earned a goal off of a throw in. They did in the ACC tournament meeting between these two teams last year. That one wound up being a 3-2 win for the Tigers. like four Notre Dame subs came on just a moment ago. Kaylee Ronan, Audrey Weiss, Paige Peltier, Caroline Gray for the Irish. And these are the moments you know, I was talking about for Clemson to be able to step up and create more pressure. And well done from Bourne Camp just to read it the entire way and then have players around the ball. And this is where Clemson has been successful in this first 45 minutes. Closing ground when it's possible, denying that space in behind, winning the second ball. Now the next 45 will be about connecting these passes in the attack. Limiting Notre Dame on the ball as much as possible. Now Wingate did come off for the Irish. You will see some good speed out of Eli Osbeck, number five. Still gives a bit of that vertical threat. It's a good, confident move by St. George. Crowd liked it. <laughs> Gabby Gambino coming on for Malia Morris for the Tigers. Gabby, a freshman out of Lewiston, New York. It's her fifth appearance of the season, so this is part of the match. A couple minutes before the end of the first half, both teams may be giving 
A couple players arrest, but an opportunity brewing for the Tigers. They've got numbers in the attack, still going forward. Winner got the ball central. <laughs> and what a different look that winner gives than Sammy Meredith yeah. this time, just threatening in behind. Just her ac activity creates a turnover and then gets in behind and then running at the back line to, to get the corner kick. Yeah, it was Gambino just came into the match. You can see she and Winner both working there to help earn this corner for the Tigers. It'll be their second. Kenzie Wood, grad transfer from Northwestern, coming back home to play at Notre Dame from Penn High School in Granger, Indiana. Will she be called upon to make a save here as McKenna Morris readies from the corner for Clemson? Up and stayed in. Barely, looked like it, maybe not. Now it's out of bounds for a goal kick. We've seen this for both teams now and oh, both teams that pride themselves on set pieces, corner kicks with their aerial advantage. Service has to be better. At least give those targets an opportunity to get something on them. Gatino, everybody running in front of her. She sees it, Ospek. Gets there first. Ospek centering ball. Is there a chance for Clemson to go on the counter? Ball out of bounds. That was Paige Peltier. One of those recent substitutions for the Irish, number 24 in the middle. Peltier tried to hold off a couple of defenders. Goal kick. Ellie Makowitz, junior from Broomfield, Colorado, took over the starting goalkeeping position last year. Excuse me, taking over this year, Hensley Hancock. How could I forget my favorite goalkeeper name for the Tigers last year? Now Makowitz, who had three starts in 2021, has been in goal for all of them thus far, coming off a great performance, four saves, including a penalty kick save at West Virginia. Gatino, perhaps one more chance to be had for the Irish. Peltier nods it down, good looking ball, but nobody out in the wing. Yeah, had a bit hectic at the end now with all the subs coming in, but good energy, still fun in, in action. We're seeing Notre Dame start to put more pressure on Clemson, trying to drive them back. Advantage being played here for the Irish. Ball in the box, countdown is on. And that will do it for our first half. Just one goal, and it belongs to the Clemson Tigers. Coming in the 21st minute, they lead the unbeaten Irish by one. Well, it is the exact moment that we thought that Clemson could really take advantage of Notre Dame playing in the three back. Quick transitional moment, get on the outside of the three center backs, and it's a beautiful ball across for a first time finish from Sammy Meredith to put Clemson up 1-0 exactly the spot that Eddie Rodwanski's team wants to be in headed into halftime. A little comfortable rhythm at times. Thank you so much. Appreciate your words. Thank you. Good to hear from both head coaches there at halftime. Give you some good things to look for. How will the Irish respond? One of four teams in the country coming into tonight, unbeaten and untied thus far. They knew they'd get a big challenge coming into conference play, as always, and it's been that way. Tough to go on the road, too, as this is the conference opener for any of our ACC women's soccer teams. Clemson Tigers on their home field hosting Notre Dame. Jen Hildreth, Lori Lindsay, glad to have you with us here in our Thursday night primetime matchup on ACCN. Got the Clemson Tigers a couple of weeks in a row, so Clemson fans want to make sure you keep it tuned right here to ACCN next few weeks. Clemson and White on their home field, leading by one. Most of the starters for both teams back in now as Conti gets it out wide. Go, 
like a handball will stop things as McKenna Morris whistled for the handball. Ava Gatino, one of the key pieces in the back for the Irish. Notre Dame playing with those three backs. Hudson on the far side. All three of them just touched it. Leah Klinky had it for a moment, but here come the Tigers. Conti, take the shot herself off the post. It is a great attack from Clemson. Just step up defensively to create the turnover. And then Conti with just a little bit of space. And she gets her head up to see if she's going to play it out wide. And then opts to go herself, just ricochets it off. The side post, unfortunate for the midfielder. Great strike from distance. I mean, this is a senior from just down the road in Greenville, South Carolina. Saw an opening and she said, heck yeah, I'm going to take the shot. <laughs> Why not? Three goals, what assists on the season already for Conti. Good crowd on hand tonight. Imagine they're ready for some good soccer both tonight and tomorrow night. Top ranked Clemson men's team will be in action right here on Historic Riggs Field, taking on a, a Syracuse team that's unbeaten thus far. Should be a good one. That's tomorrow night, 7 Eastern on ACCN. By the way, Clemson, one of five schools at the moment to have both their men's and women's teams ranked in the top 25. Duke Blue Devils also in that category with the men and women ranked. This will be a deep throw for the Tigers from the corner. McKenna Morris will get it back from Conti. Morris charging forward, good ball in the box. But it outruns Meredith, the goal scorer for the Tigers in the 21st minute. Which is even in these opening minutes for Clemson, just finding a little bit of space for the combination play. It's Morris that's tucking in centrally to draw out the midfielders of no Notre Dame, creating just a little bit of space, just a heavy touch in the end. Corbin Albert, does she need to be more involved for Notre Dame? Such a key piece. Playmaker finds the space here out wide. Back central it goes. Leading scorer, Wingate in the vicinity. And Hirschfeld has done such a good job is winning the second ball. As soon as that ball is played over the top to look for Wingate for Notre Dame over the top. Clemson players, especially Hurstfelt, in such a good position just to win and then collect the ball and then build out. I do still feel like there's opportunities though for Clemson right now. Once Hirschfeld does win it essentially, can she look to play in behind quickly in those transitional moments? If not, then continue to, to keep possession and circulate the ball around. We'll have a stoppage here. And another card. We saw card issued to each team in the first half. And Hirschfeld picks this one up for the Tigers. Yeah, late challenge from Hirschfeld just coming through. Van Zanten of Notre Dame. But you like the pressure from Clemson, continue to force them to play back, force them to play at a pace that Notre Dame doesn't want to play in. And so creating some of those turnovers that have led to some attacks for Clemson. And will we see the Irish do as their coach, Nate Norman, was urging them, roll the dice a little more, be bold, be willing to take some risks. Now they may leave themselves exposed, but I don't want to go down without a fight here on the road at Clemson. Well, and it goes back to what I was just talking about. As soon as that ball's played over the top to look for Olivia Wingate, 
do they have players coming underneath to collect the second ball? Because then it will create numbers up situations going forward. Right now, it's just too easy for number 15 Hirschfeld that I talked about to be able to collect and then build out and keep possession for Clemson. Got to get higher pressure on the ball, something that Notre Dame has been known for throughout this season so far. Irish coming in. Some of the best marks in the country offensively with shots, shots on goal. They're number one in the nation in corner kicks. Here is Wingate. Wingate one on one. White stopped her just enough to let her defenders come in and help out. But still, can Notre Dame win it back? That's what Albert was just trying to do. And that is where Nate Norman wanted to see some better effort from his team. Well, it was an important touch for White to come over and make the play against Wingate. So dangerous once she gets the ball in behind. But the first ball, the first player to collect the loose ball was Conti. Really been the story of the evening so far. Clemson doing such a good job, just getting numbers around the ball, making it difficult for Notre Dame. Emily Bruff here on the ball, number five, making her first start of the season, the freshman from Liverpool, England. Starting in place of Renee Lyles, who I know her teammates are thinking about. They're all wearing yellow wristbands. Let her know that's her favorite color. They're thinking of her. Lyles away due to a family emergency. Leading scorer for the Tigers on the season thus far. Meredith pressuring here. Has the goal. There was one change to start the second half, by the way, for Clemson. Malia Morris not in the match. Sydney Minerick starting the second half in her place. Wingate off to the races again. Had her first hat trick a couple of games ago. Lays it across. And Clemson defense taking no chances. And goodness, the movement from Wingate is just so good. Always an option going forward. Makes it so predictable for her teammates in the attack. What? What more, what better does she need with her, do you think, Lori, with, with what she's been doing and able to create in the attack? Well, I think right now they're just going with Wingate and maybe one other player, whether it's Albert up top or, or Mercado. And it's just too easy because Clemson's doing a good job of getting numbers behind and collecting the initial ball that's either played across or played into the box. And it's one thing coming into this game that we've talked about is for Notre Dame is their ability to press, get numbers higher up the field. And we really haven't seen that. We've seen more of them playing with a five back. Credit to Clemson for, for pinning them in. But can they press a little bit more themselves and create those numbers up situations going forward and getting more players around Wingate? That was Maneric. And Conti laying it forward for Morris. McKenna Morris looking toward that far corner. This ball does stay in, by the way. Meredith has the height. Her mom was a basketball player here at Clemson. She's six foot, but couldn't get this one on target. And what a great buildup from Clemson. Just a little combination play. And this is the ball that lets Morris down. Just plays, needs to play that on the carpet, play it on the grass, into the feet of Meredith. Almost identical positioning of Meredith that led to the goal in the first half. Good build up again from Clemson. A good start to the second half from the Tigers. Tigers have doubled up the Irish in shots to this point, 8-4. Notre Dame with a perfect record in non-conference. First time they've done that since 2008. And that was a the year they made it all the way to the NCAA final, went 27 and two that year. Would certainly love to build off some of that same success in the non-conference, carry that into conference play, get off to start like they did last year. And they won their first six ACC games, but Meredith offside won't get the opportunity for the brace. Oh, just an unfortunate for Meredith, though. That's really the first time that we've seen her test in behind. A lot of it has been back to goal, looking to see if she can collect the ball to her feet. This time, just toeing the line, looking for it in behind. Right ball in behind. It was played initially. That's first offside call we've had all night for either team. Kiki Van Zanten. 
able to help Jamaica qualify for the 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup next year over the summer. Kati Drazina, number 15. Started every match this season for Notre Dame. I mentioned the Irish trying to start like they did last year. Perfect 6-0. They were scoring a ton of goals. Hard to score against, but they were really challenged. The toughest part of their ACC slate a year ago was at the end. At one and three in that stretch. So they cooled off a bit, but that was where all of their ranked conference opponents were. They start off with a ranked opponent <laughs> this time around on the road here at Clemson. Cross into the box and into the gloves of Mackenzie Wood. Well, Jen, we heard Nate Norman tell us just at the beginning of this half and what a great test this is in terms of continuing to find numbers around the ball, press at times, doing what they do best. An opportunity to learn about themselves quickly, getting right into conference play against Clemson away from home. Maneric. Making a presence felt getting the start here in the second half. Conti always so active in the middle of the field for the Tigers. There's Maneric. First felt. Plays protector, but can get into the attack too. Good ball in the box. That has to be in, and it is. Clemson now up two. And it's great positioning by the freshman Bruff, who got her first start of the season. Just holds her run inside the box looking for that cutback ball. It's the right pace on the ball that is cut back, and this is a first-time finish to put Clemson up 2-0. They've had a lot of success in the wide areas, and there's the positioning of Bruff, just holds a run, comes across it with a right foot, and just places it. Doesn't even make great contact, but just slots it into the far post. And great hold-up run from the freshman, not to get in too early, just a good recognition that all of the defenders for Notre Dame had retreated back into goal, left the space open for her. Just did enough to keep it on frame. A freshman off to a great start. As you said, it's her first start tonight, but she has appeared off the bench in every match for the Tigers, except one to this point, and scored in her first two appearances. And now giving Clemson a little bit of breathing room. Still plenty of time, though, for Notre Dame to play with. Nate Norman wanted to see how his team would handle adversity. They're facing it now, down two on the road. Well, and I love one of the things that Eddie Redwanski talked about coming into this game was just finding a way to win. And defensively, they've done such a good job of collecting the second balls that allow them to build out and get numbers forward. Here are some good numbers for the Irish. A shot off the crossbar. Give Corbin Albert a few more looks. Irish wanting the immediate answer and just nearly getting it. Well, my goodness, what a strike from Corbin Albert. Just takes it on herself, gets on the dribble, gets it to her left foot and just strikes through it. Just hits off the, the crossbar, unfortunately. That's a good little Ooh. strike, though, and just couldn't put it back. It looks like it's Wingate that tries to get the follow-up, but just too much power on it. We've been waiting to see that from Albert the entire game, just finding a little bit of space to break through, and that's exactly what Notre Dame's going to need in these last 30 minutes. Somebody that's going to take control of this game, start to get on the front foot, commit numbers forward, and put the back line of Clemson under pressure that we haven't seen throughout this first part of this second half and the first part of this game, really. And Corbin Albert, preseason all ACC pick, just a sophomore, but had a great first year, a dozen goals in our first campaign with the Irish. 
and really haven't seen the press that we expected to from Notre Dame. As soon as Clemson has won the ball, they've dropped back. And yes, you want to be mindful of the ability for Clemson to be able to combine and get in behind quickly. I think there's been times, though, when Notre Dame can step up the pressure and deny that service and allow them to be able to have players in more advanced positions that would work to their advantage, especially with playing in this 3-5-2 formation. Manerick. McKenna Morris, her sister Malia, did check back into the match just a few minutes ago. After that crack off the crossbar from Albert, the sound of that told you everything you needed to know. All the power was put into the shot. Hirschfeld, nice moves. She'll take the shot, and it is saved. Hirschfeld putting on a little bit of a show. Yeah, you like it too. She's the one that's been just setting play and moving the ball quickly, looking for the combination play to free up other players. This time she sees a little bit of room herself. Has one, has a go at it. Well done from Wood though to keep a hold of it. Does allow the rebound. McKenna Morris. It's actually the first save for Wood in this match. Morris gets it back. Was she tripped? Play on, says the referee. Maneric. Follow up with the left, not on target. Let's take another look. Was there a foul on this play? Well, Morris does a good job. No, it does look like it's all ball to me. Good no call from the referee. But it's really a positioning of the outside wing backs for Notre Dame that's causing them some problems. They're getting high and wide, and it's easy for the interception for, no, for Clemson, excuse me, than to be able to win the ball and then have players in advanced positions to exploit in those wide areas outside the three center backs for Notre Dame, causing a lot of problems in the second half. Well, Clemson came in talking about their defense at Eridwanski when we spoke with him this week, and that's where he felt like he'd seen some real growth from his team. They had a stretch where they gave up five goals in consecutive matches on the road at Alabama, and then in a 2-2 draw, the Alabama game, they're only lost, by the way, 3-0 at South Carolina. Those two back-to-back. -back. Since then, two shutouts for their defense, but now their offense flexing some muscle. Notre Dame on the takeaway. This is an opportunity for the Irish. They've got numbers, three in the attack going forward. It's touched toward Wingate. She'll go back. No chance for a follow-up. How about that tracking back defensively? Yeah, great commitment by the Tigers to get back. There's six players that work together to make that predictable, because at a time it was Notre Dame with a 3v2 situation. That angle was cut down, and now the Tigers are off and running. This is Malia Morris, little slip. That's not where McKenna Morris wanted to put it. Can Notre Dame? Make the Tigers pay. You know where they want to go. It's toward Wingate. Bourne Camp had it covered so solid back there defensively for the Tigers. Great example of what she means to this team. We talked about not having the same stats as last year so far, but just composed the partnership between her and White back there. So important. And when you look at these two teams in terms of building into the ACC play, so important to have two center backs that are on the same page. Steady defensively. Born camp, All American a couple of times over. Just a junior from Mooresville, North Carolina. Helping her defense hold down 
what had been one of the top offenses, at least in terms of generating opportunities in the country in the Irish. So far, it looks like this will be a corner kick for the Tigers. They're first in the second half, third overall. I'd say we haven't seen the best from either team yet on, on their corners and set pieces, but certainly we know the potential is there. Ball in the box. Wingate has two in front of her. Absolutely nobody in blue around her. If she's going to do it, she's going to have to do it herself. Wingate versus the world. Can she get a shot? She does. Not good enough to beat Makowitz, but what an effort. Yeah, what a little bit of individual effort from Wingate. So important, just sees the, sees the space, takes on four different players. You see the commitment from Clemson to track back and well done from White to push Wingate at the last second, just wide, not allowing her to get a good look on frame and it makes it easy for Makowitz to make the save. And, and then there's nobody there to, to follow up for Notre Dame because really it's just a, individual effort from Wingate. Albert, will she get another go at it? Yeah, she's knocked off the ball, good defending. Wingate tried to dance around the defense. Harper White having none of it. Ava Gattino diving header and double overtime to give the Irish the win in the regular season meeting between these two teams last year. That was toward the end of the season, though, in October. Tonight they meet to open conference play. Van Zanten, ACC Offensive Player of the Week, had a great week last week to help the Irish finish the non-conference portion of their season unbeaten. And Jen Clemson has to be extremely happy with the way they defended so far in this game. On the front foot, defending going forward, stepping when necessary. Two center backs of White and Bornkamp stepping up into the midfield, winning the ball. And then the commitment to track back, get numbers behind as well from the midfield, so important to them slowing down the Notre Dame attack. Van Zanten. And Rosina, look inside for Mercado. Cuts back outside. When McKenna Morris took away any opportunity there for Notre Dame. about manhandling. Kind of Morris came in, a rucking ball there. And did it cleanly, took it away, trying to give the Tigers something going here in the attack. Hirschfeld wanted to flick it over toward Malia. Not quite far enough to get around the Notre Dame defense. And I think that there's one area of Hirschfeld's game that continued to elevate is to play that ball over the top or switch the point of attack initially instead of look to combine again down the near side and then look to play. Just play it initially, break, break the first line of pressure and then go out the other side. Been so good at dictating the play centrally, winning some of the second balls. Mercado has a chance. She's blocked by White. Feels like Notre Dame running out of ideas a little bit in the attack. They go back toward Wingate. Van Zanten right along the edge of the box does get the shot off. Irish did get a good look out of all of that. Mackowitz does well to keep her feet moving and then looks like she's going one way and then pushes off to, to read it well the second. You talk about you know some of the lack of ideas, Van Zanten trying to find a little bit of space to fire that one with her left foot. But this is why these games are so important, Jen, because when you're playing against some of the teams that you can press, you can move the ball, you have the majority of the possession in non-conference, 
forces you to have even better ideas, be even more clinical in the attack. Uh, Morris is offside. Not quite timed right there for the Tigers. Ooh, and that's close. I don't know. It looks like she was onside when that ball was played. Just slips through. Tough call. Good run from Morris. Band? Find a little slip ball through. Sorry, Laura. Band helping to give us a nice little atmosphere Listen, tonight. I, I understand. The band is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you don't need to finish your point. I'm just going <laughs> to jump in about the, <laughs> the atmosphere. Laura, you please stop talking. Let's listen to the band. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that to you, at least not on purpose. <laughs> it is a fun atmosphere. So great to be on campus. Glad you can join us for these Thursday night matchups. We expect to have some great ones all season long here in ACCN. Both teams getting ready to make some changes. Hold your horses, Notre Dame. Four of them coming in. I'll try to get you caught up on all of those. There is just one. It's Ella Hooser for Clemson, but the four for Notre Dame. You've got Sophia Fisher, Aaron Honstein, number 10, who you just saw a moment ago, Katie Coyle, Ellie Osbeck are your four changes for the Irish. And remember, in college soccer, you are allowed a re-entry in the second half. So expect to see quite a bit of that because Nate Norman feels he's got a really deep team. He wants to press. He wants to see more energy. So you can imagine he's going to be going to his bench a bit but he wants to keep number nine out there as long as possible. Wingate with the shot once again. It is just too close to Makowitz. Well, this is why you want to get some of the subs on for Notre Dame to be able to keep up with the pace of Wingate. So active, continuously is the outlet for them, whether it's in behind, whether it's back to goal. Makowitz has done a good job, though, for Clemson just to hold her ground. Well, those four subs give a little fresh energy to the Irish. Down two goals, a goal in each half for the Clemson Tigers. As they try to pick up a win in their conference opener. Shot is not on target. That was Albert again unleashing with the left foot. Well, what a week three ACC football lineup we have for you Saturday on ACC Network. It all starts with Virginia Tech hosting Wofford at 11 a.m. Eastern, and it is capped off by, come on, Clemson fans, you know this, right? Number five, Clemson. Just around the corner, in fact. Here. Death Valley, there will have Louisiana Tech. That's a night matchup for you. You can also catch everything on the ESPN app. Honstein, senior, real calming presence when she comes on. In the words of her head coach, number 10 there in the middle. Knows where to put the ball, trying to connect those lines. <laughs> Albert. Feel her really trying to put more of her stamp on this match for Notre Dame. And the Irish have challenged the Tigers. Season high six saves by Makowitz on the night. Offside against the Irish this time. That's their first offside infraction.
Even a mistouch from Gatino is recovered so cleanly. She takes care of it. So tough when you're playing that 50-50 ball and Bourne Camp is anywhere in the vicinity. I mean, it would be the same way if you were Clemson trying to do it the other way, which they haven't very much because they know they've got Gatino defensively for Notre Dame to win him in the air. Yeah, and certainly for Clemson, just credit to them because they're defending with their attackers as well as forcing Notre Dame to have to play that long ball and then Bourne Camp's in a great position to win the initial header. Mercado somehow still keeping it at her feet. Good numbers now for the Irish. Katie Coyle, number 22, got it back in play. Now Sophia Fisher. There is a foul call just outside the area, but boy, what an opportunity here for Notre Dame. Yeah, you just get the sense, too. It's one of those things coming into this game that Coach Nate Norman for Notre Dame said he wanted to be one of the fastest tempo teams in the country. And you just get the sense right now, though, that Clemson's forcing them to play a little bit out of their comfort zone not connecting their passes, not really able to create some of those combination play, but do set up for a great opportunity right outside the box. Corbin Albert has a goal directly off a free kick already this season. Not this time, not to be. Clemson leading this one 2 nothing. A goal in each half. Here's how it all got started in the 21st minute. And the transitional moments is where Clemson knew that they could get at this Notre Dame team. Quick little ball over the top. Conti plays it in his Sammy Meredith path, and then it's a first time finish from the striker. And then to open the second goal in the second half, it's Bruff, the freshman, getting her first start of the season. Just holds her run perfectly inside the box, waiting for the cutback ball for another first time finish to put Clemson up 2 0. Now, yeah, Clemson's look dangerous, and their defense has really done a good job of limiting. This Notre Dame attack on the other end. It's been a tight series overall. This is the 10th meeting. Notre Dame five wins. Clemson has four. Mentioned they had the split last season with Notre Dame winning in double overtime in the regular season. And then Clemson getting a bit of revenge in the first round of the ACC tournament. That was a five goal affair, by the way. 3-2 win by the Tigers. Clinky, a good touch through from yeah, right, Albert. Yeah. Right idea from Albert. And that's one, something that we haven't really seen for Notre Dame in this game, just those two linking up of Albert and Wingate. Clemson now on the break. It's Emma Wenner. Good speed up top for the Tigers when she comes in. Certainly gives them a different look. And we talked about it. Sammy Meredith doing a good job of holding up play, allowing for others to get involved. But it's Winner. Looking to take on herself, drive at the back line. Not afraid to go 1v1. Quarter kick coming for the Tigers. And set pieces were all the rage in this matchup when we got to that ACC meeting. And it, it played out to be true. Clemson scored off a corner kick in each of the two meetings against Notre Dame last season. Kenna Morris's ball headed down, still in the box. White back into the box. Board camp still up there. It's tapped up and over. Board camp looking for her first goal of the season. You know she's hanging around in the box until the play is fully over. Got a well, good save there for Yeah, us. well, it's a fantastic save from Wood initially, but Bourne Camp just gets up. And look at the power that she creates. The ball's lofted up by her center back partner, White. And then Bourne Camp, I thought she was going to try to bring it down initially, but just goes herself, does get enough power on it, forcing the save from Wood as well to keep her feet moving. Driven ball. Found a Notre Dame player first. Clemson. Trying to keep it in that attacking third of the field. They have a two-goal lead. 
Ella Hooser. Manusos, freshman, had some nice moves, really. Confident on the ball. Just came in ready to play. The words of her coach, Redwanski. Here's Hooser. Saturday morning at a special time. Mark your calendar, 10 a.m. Eastern. The ACC Huddle Crew will get you set for another full day of football, and they're in for a long day, because at 11 p.m. Eastern, after the final game of the day, which is Clemson and Louisiana Tech, they'll have a complete wrap-up of the whole day with highlights, analysis, and interviews with players and coaches. That's right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Under 10 minutes to play, Notre Dame, that perfect record on the line as they open conference play on the road here in Clemson. Clemson Tigers will go on the road. They don't have a game this weekend. They'll be on the road at Wake Forest next Thursday. We'll be there. That's our ACCN primetime matchup next Thursday at 8 p.m. And then down to Tallahassee for their third conference game. That's what's coming up for the Tigers. Boy, wouldn't they love to start things off with a win at home before they hit the road. Oh, that's a good touch. Kept alive by Conti, and now Malia Morris crisscrossing into the middle. Kiki Van Zanten back to help defend. Yeah, just a little slow in the initial final pass, but this is something that the Tigers have done so well throughout this game, just baiting the defense of Notre Dame and then creating little combinations around them to be able to break free and get numbers into the attack. Hirschfeld gets like a little do, -si -do leg kick going sometimes. <laughs> just get some fancy moves. Can send a nice ball through too. Here's another chance for Clemson looking for that far post. I think it might have deflected off the post yeah, just a bit. And I think Warner was just caught in between two minds, wasn't sure if she should go herself, got her head up to look to, to, to feather that ball across. Yeah. It's just too heavy in the end. Right idea, the right ball to be played. Yeah, I think you're right. Take it herself, kind of a difficult angle, or she saw Manusos coming there out of the corner of her eye. And the ball wind up really being in between the two. Shot or the pass. No goals yet for the freshman, but boy, she is a nice burst of speed and energy. And she comes on for the Tigers. Conti over to Malia Morris. Malia back to her younger sister, McKenna. Harper White not talked about as much as the All-American beside her born camp, but she's been really solid back there in the center of the defense for the Tigers tonight. Yeah, the partnership is going to be so important throughout ACC play. And you know, Eddie Radwanski talked about it. You can't win championships unless you have a steady back line. And those two, certainly the anchors back there, allows for McKenna Morris and even St. George on the left-hand side to be able to get higher up the field, create numbers up situation, and it's gonna be a really important piece as the season wears on. This Clemson offense is gonna be challenged once again. Talked about that next game. And they head to Winston-Salem, take on Wake Forest. I mean, the Demon Deacons, boy, have they been stingy defensively so far. All-American in goal, Caitlin Parks has six shutouts. The Demon Deacons have allowed just one goal on the season so far. They will be in action on Sunday at NC State. You can see that here on ACCN, wrapping up our Sunday best on Sunday. 7 p.m. Eastern, if you want to get a sneak peek at the Demon Deacons before our primetime matchup next Thursday. 
Well, one of the keys coming into the second half for the Tigers was patience in the attack. Can they create even more opportunities? See a couple players down. It does look like it's Bourne Camp and Albert just colliding. Both of them up now, though. But you know, patience was the key coming into the second half for the Tigers, and that is going to be a necessity against a Wake Forest team because if Clemson can do such a, as good of a job as we've seen them tonight, defending, defending higher up the field and creating those turnovers, if it's not on to go quickly, then can they recycle the ball, find even better opportunities? And with the, some of the wing play that we've seen tonight and the service that we've seen into the box, be really critical for them to be able to create opportunities in the box. Hey, Lori, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw something at you. I see what you think <laughs> about this. A couple minutes remaining oh, in this one. Wait. As we go on this season, I literally have given her no time to think about this. <laughs> and you don't have to pick anybody now. I think, so by the way, if you don't know, Lori, her nickname, Lightning. <laughs> is that the U.S. national team or Virginia? Where'd you pick that one up? Or younger? Uh, no, it was professionally okay. and a little bit with the national team. And what a lie. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I, I like it. We're going to go with it. And I think you need an, we need an all-Lightning team. Sparks. Let's just look for that, right? As we go along this season. I was just looking at Bourne Camp thinking really what a stud she is in the back line. How much you'd love to have her on your team. There's a number of players I think we're gonna see throughout the season that might make it. It's just just something to think about for you. All right, I like it. The all lightning team, like you it. down with that? All lightning team, okay. yes. Listen, I like the love that we're given to these center backs. Gaitino for Notre Dame has been excellent. Her build up play. But then we talk about White and Bourne Camp, and Bourne Camp especially in a center back that can create opportunities and score goals for you. My goodness. Exactly what you want on your team. 2 nothing lead for the Tigers, trying to hang on with four minutes to go on their home field in this ACC opener conference play for both teams. I think we've seen Notre Dame settle for that shot outside the area. A few times now, Corbin Albert smacked one off the crossbar. You don't mind that, but maybe maybe wait a little more, get a better look. Yeah, think? certainly. And I think you know a lot of that is just rushing the play. And we talk about Clemson defensively and forcing Notre Dame to play almost out of their comfort zone, not allow them to get a lot of good looks. And I think more of it's a credit to the, the Clemson defense than it really is to Notre Dame. They have the ability in the attack the Fighting Irish to be able to look to link up. And we mentioned it moments ago, we hadn't seen a ton with Albert and Wingate in this game. Those two can be difference makers. Well, as it gets late into the evening, it has started to cool down a little bit, but certainly it's been a long night for a player like Caroline Conti. Senior for the Tigers. That's a lot of running there in the center of the midfield. Covers a lot of ground. You know, it's interesting. Clemson really felt they were well tested. They were on the road for four of their seven non-conference games coming into this ACC opener tonight. They had a draw at fourth ranked South Carolina. Their other ranked opponent was their last match. They were on the road at 17th ranked West Virginia. And despite how well they felt they played, that was their first win over a ranked opponent. And Eddie Redwanski telling us that they maybe felt a little pressure there, that they did need to get a result to prove themselves. They did, and now, now they're looking at a top 10 win. Should be the first one since 2019. They can hang on and take down Notre Dame. Well, a huge confidence boost as well without their attacking midfielder, Renee Lyles, as well, to get this result against Notre Dame at home beginning of ACC conference play and really creates a good momentum going into some important games. Yeah, they've been the better team tonight overall, wouldn't you say? I, I think no doubt. From the beginning of the game, we saw a few opportunities for Wingate early on, but outside of that, really limited Notre Dame to not m very much at all into the attack and have controlled on both sides of the ball. And I do always take non-conference numbers with a grain of salt because the ACC, one of the best 
conferences in the country, right? So you look at some of those non-conference numbers and you say, okay, we'll, we'll see how that holds up. But I mean, Notre Dame had outshot their first seven opponents 175 to 31. They were averaging 22 shots per game. They have 13 tonight. They've done well putting six of those on goal. So also credit Makowitz for doing her job. Season high, six saves. Well, I think it's important too, that even though Clemson has been the better team throughout this 90 minutes, still some positives for Notre Dame and, and they'll take some away. They knew this was gonna be an important test away from home continuing to find ways that they can break down Sinji defenses. This is one of the best in the ACC, the Clemson Tigers, especially their two center backs. Still a lot to take away from this game and to build on for, for Notre Dame. Well, Notre Dame will be at home. That's good news for their next two. Not easy though, it never is in this conference. Seventh ranked Virginia will be coming in for their next match in conference play. And then they've got Pittsburgh, which the Panthers, by the way, another one of those teams that had a really good start in their non-conference. Some eye-popping numbers offensively though, they are without their star, Amanda West, unfortunately losing her to injury. So that's gonna be a tough test for the Panthers this season as they get going in conference play. Perhaps one last chance for the Irish as the clock counts down here at Riggsfield. Leah Morris says, I don't think so. Let's put the ball at the other end. Well, the Clemson Tigers got what they wanted tonight. The shutout, a couple of goals, and their first win over a top 10 opponent since. Let's do the date, September 15th, 2019, exactly three years ago today. Yeah, excellent win from the Clemson Tigers to open up ACC play. Really important home win. Now they have a week off before they face Wake Forest.